Fertilization is the fusion of the sperm and the ovum. This takes place in the ampulla of the fallopian tube. Both the ovum and the sperm must be transported from their gonadal site of production to the ampulla of the fallopian tube for fertilization. What are the parts of the fallopian tube? The fimbria, which are finger-like projections, the infundibulum, the ampulla, site of fertilization, and the isthmus that is connecting the fallopian tube to the uterine cavity. At ovulation, one ovum is released into the abdominal cavity. The fimbria, we said, they are finger-like projections. They will contract in sweeping motion to guide the released ovum into the fallopian tube. Fimbria are also lined by cilia. So that makes it easier for them to beat in waves towards the interior of the fallopian tube. Within the fallopian tube, the ovum is propelled by the peristaltic contractions and the ciliary movement. So if fertilization occurs at this point, that means if the sperms do come, then the blastocyst will be implanted in the endometrium ball. And if the fertilization does not occur, what will be the fate of the ovum? The ovum will degenerate in about 12 to 24 hours. It will get phagocytosed. So for how many hours the ovum remains viable? It is viable for 24 hours, but in female tract it may remain for 48 hours even. Now the sperm travel to the fallopian tube. The sperms they have whip like movements. At the time of the ovulation the cervical mucus is thin and watery under the effect of estrogen. So the sperms are entering into the myometrium. Once they have entered the contractions of the myometrium will churn the sperm in washing machine fashion. So this action will quickly disperse the sperm throughout the uterine cavity. As the sperm they reach the oviduct, they are propelled towards the fertilization site by the upward contraction of the smooth muscle. And recent literature proves that the sperms, they smell their way to the egg. That's interesting to know that the sperms possess olfactory receptors HOR 77-4. So now the sperms, they have reached the ampulla, ovum is already waiting. So the sperm and the ovum will fertilize. So around the ovulation time, out of a large number of millions of sperms per ml, only few thousands will manage to reach the oviduct. So normal sperm density ranges from 15 million to greater than 200 million sperm per ml of the semen. In fact, if it is less than 15 million sperms per ml, then it is regarded as reduced sperm count. Oligosuspermia. So that can make the man infertile. So why do we require so many sperms when ultimately only one will be victorious and only one will be undergoing fertilization? Millions of sperms are required to break the barrier of the walls that are surrounding the ovum. Okay, So the millions of sperm have so many heads. Heads have acrosome. Acrosome have lytic enzymes. So that lytic enzyme will help in breaking the wall. The parts of the sperm, head, the acrosome containing lytic enzymes, middle piece and the tail. So to fertilize, a sperm must pass through the corona radiata and the zona pellucida that is surrounding the ovum. Zona pellucida has ZP3, zona pellucida 3 receptor on which the sperm head will come and bind. In some books they say the, there is reaction between the fertilin and integrin. It is the fertilin on the plasma membrane of the sperm that will combine with integrin on the plasma membrane of the egg. Integrin, you know, is a cell adhesion molecule. So fertilin and integrin are combining together due to which the ovum and the head of the sperm are combining. So the head of the sperm moves in and the tail part will be left behind. The head contains the crucial genetic material. The sperm, they release nitric oxide and when they're inside the egg, so there will be release of stored calcium within the egg. 
this calcium will trigger the final meiotic division we know that the final meiotic division in the egg occurs at the time of fertilization so now the sperm head and egg nuclei will fuse together so what blocks the polyspermy only one sperm will be victorious the others will not be able to penetrate the membrane how this is maintained the first sperm to reach the ovum will fuse simultaneously it will trigger a chemical change in the plasma membrane of the ovum so that the outer layer gets impenetrable to the entry of any further sperms that means when one sperm enters it is going to stop the further entry of all other sperms so there will not be any polyspermy now coming to the implantation the zygote that is formed will be implanted so now we know that the head of the sperm and the ovum combines together so they have fertilized they have found a zygote which has half the chromosomes from the ovum and the rest half from the victorious sperms so now the zygote has to travel further so 3 to 4 days it will just remain in the ampulla it will not go any further because a constriction ring is there between the ampulla and remainder of the fallopian tube okay so during this time don't think that the zygote is just sitting idle it's lazy no it is rapidly undergoing a number of mitotic cell division so many cleavage and then it is undergoing so many mitotic cell division so ultimately it will form a solid ball that is called as morula and meanwhile the rising level of progesterone from the corpus luteum of pregnancy will just uh, help in the glycogen stores in the endometrium so the glycogen stores are there in the endometrium it is preparing itself for receiving this product now the morula will convert into blastocyst which has outer trophoblastic cell layer and the inner inner cell mass this inner cell mass will later on convert into embryo so now the blastocyst is there in the endometrium wall for implantation sometimes it happens that the morula descends not into the uterus but it remains in the fallopian tube in fact it starts getting implanted in the fallopian tube so will such a pregnancy called as tubal pregnancy or fallopian tube pregnancy succeed no because the oviduct the fallopian tube cannot expand with the size of the fetus so ultimately there will be a pain and rupture may be there rupture will cause hemorrhage okay so tubal pregnancy is a medical emergency so every pregnant patient we have to see carefully we have to ask for pain now these are the phases of implantation how it is occurring step by step so one week after ovulation the endometrium is suitable for implantation the morula will descend and it will continue to proliferate it will differentiate into blastocyst which has two layers okay the inner cell mass will form the fetus later on the trophoblastic layer will form the amniotic sac now here you can see the inner cell mass the trophoblastic cell layer and these are the trophoblastic tissue that are penetrating the wall of the endometrium in the second phase the advancing cord of the trophoblastic cells they tunnel deep into the endometrium carving out a hole inside so in that hole the blastocyst can go on adjust itself so here the implantation is finished the blastocyst is completely buried in the endometrium so the fetus and the mother are two genetically different individuals and the fetus is like a foreign tissue implanted in the mother so how is this transplant well tolerated why the mother's body is not rejecting the fetus number 1 the antibodies against the fetal proteins do not develop because the fetal cell does not express the mhc1 and 2 major histocompatibility 1 and 2 antigens are not expressed 
so there will not be any immune reaction secondly pregnancy we know is immunocompromised state as such so the immunity is reduced FAS ligand fast ligand is produced by the trophoblastic cells this ligand will bind to the fast receptor which is present on the mother T cells and there will be immune reaction and all the maternal T cells will get destroyed apoptosis of immune cells so the mother's body well tolerates the fetus so thank you very much hope this video was useful to you